Our speaker today is, is someone that I've been familiar with for some time. I told her that uh, she was complaining about the parking here in downtown Portland, having driven in from Oregon City, that when I joined City Club back in 72 and was working for a publisher's paper company in Oregon City, that I had the same complaint. Uh, and you can see how quickly we're reacting to it since the problem still exists some 15 or 18 years later. But we will get to it soon, Darlene. I'll talk to the mayor in the morning. Uh, she comes from a, a very active background and from a, a county that I think probably has as many diverse problems uh, and possibilities of, of any in Oregon. You have to think of a county that starts at Portland and goes up to the Mount Hood National Forest and Mount Hood. You have to think of a county as diverse as Clackamas Town Center and yet has the second largest agricultural production of any state in the state of Oregon. You can use words such as diversity, complexity, conflicts, and at the cutting edge, and certainly Clackamas County has it all. Darlene Hooley has spent a great deal of time giving to public service. She served on the Westland School District Budget Committee and went on to become a member of the Westland City Council. She spent a number of terms in the Oregon legislature and yet still had the uh, courage or whatever to uh, become an appointed member of the Clackamas County Commission. And I, uh, I guess I, as somebody who has lobbied both the Clackamas County Commission and the Oregon legislature, uh, can say that it takes real grit to go from the legislature to the county commission. Because while the legislature grapples with problems uh, once every year, or two and then goes home and sends money out and tells people to do good, a county commissioner has to be there every day and has to be the one that says, yeah, I'll help you get your road fixed or not, or gosh, we'll have to find the money to do this, that, or the other thing. Uh, it is a full-time job that requires a full-time commitment, and certainly our speaker today has made that commitment. She has served as chair of the board of Clackamas County Commissioners since January, and would you help me welcome speaking from Mills to Malls, Clackamas County Commissioner Darlene Hooley. Thank you. Now that Bill has given my speech, I can probably sit down. I'm delighted to be here today to represent Clackamas County. Let me start out by having you look at these headlines over here and going through those. The first one, headline, from the Building Industry Journal is Clackamas County, a Sleeping Giant. Headline, Willamette Week. Clackamas County is hot and I-205 is a reason. Headline, from the Business Journal, Entering Clackamas County, Oregon's Growth Hotspot. Headline, Darlene Hooley. Clackamas County has more going for it than any other county in this state. What's the meaning of all this great press? The sleeping giant is not only stirring, it's flexing its muscles. Clackamas County has tremendous strength, potential, and appeal because of its diversity. We are perhaps the most economically diverse county in the state. You just heard that we are second in agriculture, we're fifth in timber. But we're not all beautiful nurseries and lush green fields. Clackamas Town Center is the largest shopping center in Oregon and the largest retailing area between the Canadian border and San Francisco. 2.2 million square feet of, of space and that's all since 1981. We can also boast of the largest block of Class A office space outside of the downtown area. Cruise Way, that mile and a half long road that goes from I-5 east to Lake Oswego contains 1.2 million uh, square feet of Class A office buildings, and that's all happened since 1980. Our industrial base is also diverse. Clackamas County offers 40% of the primary metals job in the state. We are home to Precision Cast Parts, which is the, fast, or the second uh, fastest growing industrial company. And you will find that utility companies in Tokyo prefer our jackhammers made at Stanley Tool, one of our major industrial employers. Our proposed Metals Technology of, uh, Institute of Excellence is planned to re be a resource for this whole region as well as a magnet for statewide metals research. 
We also have the largest sawmill and pulp mill capacity in the region, which Bill, again, is well aware of. And why we're pay playing best and biggest, did you know that we supply more food to Oregonians than any other county in the state? And it's not through our agriculture, but it's through our distribution and warehousing centers. With Fred Myers, United Grocers, uh, Safeway, and Fleming, we have the largest warehousing and distribution center in the Northwest, making us Portland's grocery store the regional breadbasket. Our growing tourist industry offers tremendous uh, excitement and diversity. We have retail, we have recreation, and we have the history, uh, history there. You would expect that Mount Hood, uh, with its recreational capacity and its scenic beauty, would be our number one tourist attraction. Well, it's not. Clackamas Town Center has become our largest <laughs> tourist attraction. <laughs> there were over 8 million cars there last year. I don't know how many of those were duplicates. Uh, <laughs> But it is a very popular shopping area with its popular ice skating rink. Because we're the oldest of the three counties, much of our tourist industry focuses on our significant history. You may know that Clackamas County once included San Francisco and Vancouver, British Columbia. San Francisco has tried repeatedly to retrieve the original plat of their city that was recorded in our courthouse in uh, 1850 we still have it. Uh, they haven't gotten it from us yet, and it is publicly displayed in Oregon City, end of the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center. Now that we have heard rumblings about a regional government, and from this group, uh, Willamette County, it is interesting to note that at statehood in 1859, Multnomah County was part of Clackamas County and didn't assume its own identity until 1864. Our industries also back, uh, date back to the 1850s when woolen mills, paper mills, and lumber mills were built at Oregon City. And Oregon City is the oldest incorporated city west of the Rockies. And many of those original industries are still with us today and are thriving. Even our annual precipitation is diverse. 38 inches in Gladstone, 130 inches on Mount Hood. And speaking of Mount Hood, I love to see your beautiful city with the pictures that we take of Portland with our beautiful mountain in the background. <laughs> Just want to remind you it's in Clackamas County, but we are more than happy to share our crown jewel with you so you can use it anytime you want. Even your official uh, Christmas tree in Pioneer Squ uh, Square, that perfect 72 foot Douglas fir comes from Clackamas County. It prepared for its role for 31 years in a forest near Estacada. Our county is the state's largest producer of Christmas trees, and Oregon ranks first in the nation in Christmas tree production. It was my goal in speaking with you here today to help you understand that Clackamas County is more than great fishing, wonderful skiing, superb river rafting, famous rodeos, and the end of the Oregon Trail. But I also hope that you would realize and pre appreciate our tremendous contrast and the challenges that our diversity brings. Clackamas County is also quite different from Multnomah and Washington counties. Our government structures are very different, for example. We are a general government county with three county commissioners and six other elected officials, whereas Multnomah and Washington County, our home rule, or excuse me, their charter counties, their home rule counties with charters, and they each have five commissioners. Last week, while I was testifying in front of the Multnomah County's uh, charter committee, as I was driving and I explained about Clackamas County government, I was driving home and started thinking about the contrast in our governments and realized in trying to compare Clackamas with Multnomah, we weren't comparing just apples and oranges, we were probably comparing something like apples and railroad tracks. Our population distribution is also quite different. 
We have 14 cities located wholly within Clackamas County and two others that are partially in Clackamas County. The difference is we don't have any large dominating cities such as a Portland or a Beaverton. On the other hand, we have the largest unincorporated urban area in the region and all of those challenges that go with that. 95,000 residents in Clackamas County live within city boundaries. 170,000 live outside of those city boundaries. And if you took the North Clackamas area and put it all together and made one city, you would have the second largest city in the state. As you may know, our county is home to several small communities, but did you know that Clackamas County is the address of the two cities with the highest average household income in the state? And according to the 1985 census, it shows that four out of the top seven highest income cities in the state were in Clackamas County. We are truly an urban rural county. We are also four times larger geographically than Multnomah County and twice as large as Washington County, which gives us a lot to do with the Sheriff's Department and our road departments. We also have the most diverse topography of the three counties with our mountains and our valleys and three quarters of our 1900 square miles are forested. Count our rivers. I know you know about the Willamette because it runs right through this city and I'm sure you know about the Clackamas, but do you know about the Pudding, the Malala, the Tualatin, the Sandy, the Kalawash, or the Roaring River amongst others? Things look different here, fits diverse Clackamas County. It's the diversity of the county and its people that I love. It's the diversity, I think, that gives us our strength and our potential. It's the diversity that gives a county commissioner a full day and a crowded calendar. Why? Because not only are we diverse, but we're also a county that cares. We care about our livability and our urban parks. We care about stewardship of our rivers, our farmlands, our forests. We care that we have family wage jobs. We care about a clean, efficient transportation system. We care about involving our citizens in decisions that affect their future. We care about our children, and we care about education. In fact, we have some of the best schools, I think, in the state, in our county. And if you want to compare SAT scores or awards for excellence, I can tell you we have a whole trophy uh, room full of them. As a county government, we clearly understand the importance of education. We also understand the relationship between education and economic development. And we are strong supporters of quality education. We also care about building strong partnerships. Clackamas County believes in cooperative regional ventures and mutually beneficial regional partnerships. Partnerships that multiply our ability to serve people partnerships to help solve mutual problems, and partnerships that strengthen the ties that bind us together. It was a partnership effort that brought us the newest college campus of, a, of the state system of higher education to Clackamas County, Oregon Institute of Technology. OIT's siting was truly a cooperative adventure. It was between the county, the state, Clackamas Community College, North Clackamas School District and the private sector. No easy feat, I assure you, but we think forging those strong partnerships are important. When it comes to regional government, however, the perception of the citizens in Clackamas County, and some would say the reality is, that Clackamas County has taken its fair share of NIMBYs, not in my backyard, kind of facilities. It is also the perception that we have gotten the short end of the stick on some of the positive items such as transportation funding. I think it's important that we change that perception because we do have mutual problems that need to be solved. Many people believe, for example, that the homeless problem is really a Portland problem or a Multnomah County problem. They forget that Clackamas and Washington counties have the same problem. 
low cost housing for our migrant laborers. I don't think any of us can be afford to be parochial. We need to have a greater understanding of one another's problems. Low cost housing is a problem for all of us that we all need to work together to solve. Clackamas County voters approved the Oregon Convention Center because we saw that to be mutually beneficial. But we also expected that committee to carry on with their work, to plan for those promised facilities in Clackamas County, such as an arena for spectator sports, an agribusiness center, or a multi-use exhibition hall. I hope that continue, uh, committee would continue or that Merck would take up the uh, banner and continue with those other facilities. However, I wish to heed the words of Cicero from 50 BC when he said, let us not go over old ground, but rather let us prepare for what's to come. The sleeping giant is ready to go to work. Clackamas County has much to contribute and the regional agenda contains a number of mutual problems that can be worked out together. Parks. Parks are a high priority for Clackamas County. In fact, some of you I know are aware of our effort to help fill that void in the North Clackamas area where they're woefully lacking in parks and recreational facilities for 90,000 people. We believe if you require greater densities in the urban area, you must begin to provide those amenities such as parks and open space. And towards that end, I'm very supportive of Metro study of a regional park system. Such a system could assure the preservation of open space, wetlands, and natural areas. I know you heard about San Francisco's Bay's huge East Bay Regional Park District a few weeks ago. And that district shows us that cooperating regionally, something can be done and done successfully. Transportation planning, what you've been talking about today, is essential, that, that joint transportation planning, I think is essential. Uh, JPAC, which is our current regional transportation forum, is a model in the nation for prioritizing regional transportation needs. In fact, I think JPAC may be one of our more um, effective regional entities. It helps us to compete for those scarce federal and state transportation funds. Then of course, the real challenge is how do you distribute those funds fairly to the whole region to solve regional problems. Urban growth. When the urban growth boundary was established 20 years ago, I don't think it foresaw the facts of the 1980s. Thus, we have people living just outside of that all-important urban growth boundary, enjoying a rural lifestyle, yet also having all the urban amenities. Will they be eager to see the boundary change? I don't think so. And yet Clackamas County has less than five years supply of industrial land at its current absorption rate. The sleeping giant is awake and hungry. Urban growth boundary issues, every politician's uh, favorite subject, need to be resolved regionally. They need to be resolved with courage, with vision, with cooperation, and it must benefit all of us. Tourism, another regional agenda is tourism. The Oregon Tourism Alliance, OTA, has become a strong regional voice for cooperative projects and planning. Clackamas County is excited because right now we are selecting our consultant team who will design the national end of the Oregon Trail Visitor Center using that OTA lottery funds. This Oregon Historic Showcase is to be located at the confluence of the Clackamas and Willamette Rivers in Oregon City, where the pioneers actually unhitched their covered wagons after competing, completing that arduous Oregon Trail, that famous 2,000 mile long journey from Independence, Missouri to Oregon City. Hopefully that center will gain national attention and become a Northwest regional attraction to celebrate a world famous historical event. Children. Should children be on the original agenda? Absolutely. Our Clackamas County Children's Agenda Program has been a model in the state. 
Our county has responded like no other to issues of coordination of services, treatment programs, intervention, and community involvement. We have recently established a new Clackamas County Office of Children and Youth that will continue to develop effective ways to serve our children. We would be delighted to share with you what we've learned and what we're doing. There are suburban activity centers, water basin planning, solid waste, planning for Mount Hood, the list can go on and on. The regional agenda can be as crowded as the cooperative attitudes and goodwill of the participants. The regional agenda will work only when we acknowledge our interdependence on one another and our need to support each other with an equitable and fair distribution of resources as well as opportunities. I think it's important to remember that regionalism is really there to solve regional problems, not somebody else's problem. And Clackamas County wishes to be a progressive equal contributor in a full and reciprocal partnership with you, our neighbors in Washington and Multnomah counties. For what happens in our counties, whether that be conventions or gangs, uh, festivals or gridlock, it directly or indirectly affects all of us. From mills to malls, from mountains to marinas, from meadows to markets, Clackamas County truly incorporates all that is good about Western Oregon. It is a vibrant, exciting place to be. Come with me now for a side trip to dynamic Clackamas County. It's 1999. You have taken a modern light rail system to the Northwest largest shopping center, Clackamas Town Center. Then a leisurely boat ride down the Willamette River with a stop at Clackamas Lagoon to learn about pioneer life at the end of the Oregon Trail. You were awestruck by the beauty of the snow-capped mountains and rushing mountain streams as you rode up a new tram on Mount Hood. It seemed incredible to find wilderness, adventure, suburban luxury existing side by side in these few short hours. The antique shops of historic Kanema beckoned you before you stopped for your gourmet meal on the beautifully landscaped riverfront. You pause for a majestic view of Willamette Falls in Oregon City before checking in at your cozy bed and breakfast, now an elegantly restored home from the 1880s. But please don't wait until 1999 to discover Clackamas County. I assure you, the sleeping giant is awake and ready to go. Thank you. Thank you, Darlene. <clears throat> I will remind everyone the microphone is here on my right. You can pick for or against since we haven't taken those signs up. Uh, and uh, the first question will come today from our board host, Ned Hayes. Ned. Well, I'd like to ask a question about what I'm dismayed to find out is our number two, your, your number two tourist attraction. <laughs> But the Mount Hood area is, uh, you know, whether we like it or not, is going to come under increasing pressure over the next few years. And whether it's developed or not, that would happen. And I wondered if you could comment on the vision that Clackamas County may have for that area and the role uh, you may play in its development. First of all, we have just been talking about this issue. We've been, we're excited about what we're doing in the um, Mount Hood area. Based on some studies of, from a few years ago, it was decided that the best place to have housing and development was at the government camp area. And to that extent, we have, in the process of forming an urban renewal uh, development in that area for tax increment financing, uh, we would like to see that become a alpine kind of village with a Cascadian type of architecture that would be compatible with uh, Timberline Lodge at Mount Hood. We think that's the appropriate place for growth, uh, and we are trying to make sure that that happens. And we have, right now, we have a lot of interest in that. We've had some design 
uh, studies going from the University of Oregon, um, and we think it's going to happen. You might as well stay right here. Okay. Go ahead. I, I need my I just, glasses so I can see that more. I thought I'd just try out the against microphone here. Go ahead. Barbara Clark, City Club member. Uh, I understand that uh, Clackamas County, I've heard that Clackamas County um, has uh, cut way down on drunk driving, and I'm interested to know, is that true, and how did you do it? We've cut way down on drunk driving. Um, one of the things we've done is, and I'll talk about one particular program, and there are some others. Um, our Sheriff's Department got some portable breathalyzers and they have really cracked down particularly on the under 21 population uh, they know where most of them have cake parties if they're not sighted or if they're not within their uh, a home and <clears throat> what they have done even for those students that have decided well we're going to be safe and sane and have a designated driver if they have stopped the car um, they check the other uh, students in that automobile and s hold those accountable for drinking under 21 as well. Um, I think with new computer systems you can do wonderful things because through those systems you can begin to determine where most of the arrests take place, where most of the parties are going on, and you can begin to um, use that as a tool for cutting down on drunk driving. It's awful when you get to an age where you have to put your glasses, I have to put them on to see you and take them off to read. <laughs> Commissioner Hooley, I'm Ray Polani. I have spent 30 years of my life in Portland on the west side, but for the last three months, I am a citizen of Milwaukee. Good, and welcome to Clackamas County. So I live County. in Clackamas <laughs> County. I can speak from the vantage of both. Uh, I know that one of the priorities for Clackamas County is a light rail in the 205 corridor. And yet, at this point, there is no bus service in that corridor. Another point that I want to make is that uh, Clackamas County has a substantial roadway improvement program uh, in the northern part of Clackamas County, uh, but there is no light rail service to Milwaukee. And uh, there is, on the other hand, a rail line that ties in two important cities in North Clackamas County, and that is Milwaukee and Lake Oswego Tualatin. I'm referring, of course, to the Southern Pacific Rail Line, which has its own bridge across the Willamette River. Uh, there is a portion of the, well, all of it, really, of the Portland Traction Company line, which goes to Boring, which is in the process of being abandoned. And my question is, thank you. <laughs> my question is, you are talking about 1999, I'm talking about 1990. What about you next year asking for a trunk line service on 205 in preparation for light rail? What about the county asking for preservation of the rail line from Boring uh, to uh, Milwaukee, Lake Oswego, Tualatin, and on? all minimum cost improvements available in six months. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the question. <laughs> Is it time? No. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out quite, I don't know quite where to start, but let me, uh, while I was in the legislature, I was very supportive and worked uh, to make, to ensure that that rail line between Portland and Lake Oswego was protected. Uh, and then I got to work on it again as a county commissioner and we have been very supportive of that happening. Uh, right now we are looking toward JPAC to do a study which will determine which should be the next priority. We think that with Multnomah County's light rail line, Washington County's soon to be uh, right, uh, light rail line, that Clackamas County needs to have the next one. Uh, so we are looking forward to having that study completed to see what the recommendation is. I think it is important that we do preserve some of those right-of-ways because I also understand 
that those are the most expensive things to pick up in the future. And so I am a firm believer in picking up or trying to preserve some of those right-of-ways for future uses and have done that. I gave you two specific agendas. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm Don Sterling, a member. Uh, speaking of development on Mount Hood, I believe I'm correct that, uh, that it, with respect to another proposed development on Mount Hood, the overnight resort at Mount Hood Meadows, the Clackamas County Commission divided two in favor and one against when they were asked to, rec asked to recommend on that, even though it's not in their county. Would you summarize for us what the thinking has been on the, on the uh, commission about the impact of that development? That was, that development was debated uh, some time ago in our, at one of our commissioner's meetings. Uh, and the decision of the board was to support it on a two to one vote. Since the government camp issue has come up, uh, we have not debated it. My understanding is that that sometime in the future uh, with some of the new developments in regards to the river, uh, but we have not debated that recently. Good, more people are rushing to the microphone. Tom Sidoris, <laughs> member. 205 is bursting at the seams. The industrial corridor in Clackamas is already overcrowded. Are there any plans in the very near future for a uh, bypass from I-5 around Wilsonville through Estacada to join up with Interstate 80 going east? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> <coughs> Commission yes, Commissioner, uh, I'm Stan Baumhofer, a 22-year resident of Clackamas County. I never realized the problems you had here with the Ray Polani moving into your neighborhood. <laughs> As a, uh, recover as a recovering Methodist, though, you failed to mention that uh, you've got some of the leading uh, religious uh, headquarters in your county also. Yes. Plus uh, some of the best retirement facilities, uh, both communities and uh, facilities themselves. Uh, if I bragged about everything good about Clackamas County, the list would have been so long that we would never have gotten out of here. Yes. My question, Commissioner, is uh, pertains to the... Uh, to the com com combination or combining of our counties and the practicability of doing that. In your judgment, do you think that uh, there are administrative hurdles or demographic differences or uh, uh, real estate differences or uh, tax base differences that would prohibit combining of uh, our metropolitan counties into one organization? Let me tell you, I think there are some some services that need to be combined and some services that need to, need to be worked on regionally. I don't know that we're ready to combine all three governments at this time. And part of it is the diversity of the counties as well as uh, if you look at Clackamas County and how spread out that is. Uh, I think people feel at some point so far away from government uh, that it's just too large. But I think there's a point in a lot of services where you can say this is, um, this is a point where we can best serve it at this kind of population. Uh, you look at river basin planning. Boundaries really don't mean a whole lot in river basin planning. I think that's a regional issue that we need to work together on. So I don't know that we're ready at that time, but I certainly think there can be a full regional agenda. We have a few written questions here. The first one relates uh, to land use planning. Uh, do you think that, uh, or do you agree with Luba that Clackamas County is a part of Metro? Metro is in fact a local government and should be in control of land use planning within the Metro boundaries. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that <clears throat> Metro was ever intended to be the, and I need the question in front of me, uh, I don't know that Metro was ever intended to be the planner of land use planning. Uh, it did have a regional role and I think that is appropriate.
Do you support an expansion of the urban growth boundary in Clackamas County? And I suppose an addendum to that is, if so, where? <laughs> the million dollar question. What I do support and have been on the advisory committee for the uh, Boundary Commission through Metro, and that is that we set what our criteria are for when we move it. And there's no question, I was never meant to last forever and ever and ever, that there was a time that's appropriate to move that boundary. Uh, I think it's important before you move it or say here's where it's going to be moved, that you begin to set what the criteria are for moving it, what's the policy behind that, so you can answer the questions of when you move it, where you move it, and how you move it. What should be done to provide full urban services to the residents of the unincorporated North Clackamas County area? I'm trying to see if these are all the same handwriting. <laughs> uh, I don't know the answer to that question. I wish I did. Uh, it would solve a lot of problems if I knew the answer. We do have uh, a cooperative venture going with a blue ribbon panel that is trying to answer that question. Uh, and I know a member of that committee is here today. You have an area that is very large that, ha I mean, and I think some of the services are wonderful. It's lacking in some services. Uh, and I think more of those services need to be coordinated, but I don't know the answer to that question. And hopefully our wonderful blue ribbon panel will come forward with, a, at le uh, if not a full answer, at least a partial answer. You mentioned a full regional agenda. What would be your top five priorities for the regional agenda? Well, one of the topics you were discussing today, and I don't know if this is in any particular order, I will try to from this is my top priority and this is next time. Um, I think my top or one of the top five would have to be the continuation of regional transportation planning. You must coordinate that. And there is such a need in this area, I agree with your report, there is such a need in this area for uh, additional funding for transportation. There is such a need for um, light rail in this area that I think that has to be one of the top five. As I mentioned in my report, I think uh, planning for, on a regional basis, the urban growth boundary. I think it is appropriate that Metropolitan Service District does that and that we plan together. That's not going to be an easy task. I think another area would be uh, planning for our river basins and our water. The whole issue of water, I think, is incredible to this area, whether it be clean drinking water, uh, whether it be storm drainage runoff. But I think we need to plan in a region for our water basins and the whole issue of water. Uh, another one of those top priorities, and I mentioned it in my speech, would be the park system. Uh, I would love us to see us do something that San Francisco has done. Um, and that is, and I'm not talking about, I know, <coughs> Washington County has a good recreation district. What I'm talking about is a, a, a parks district that really would concentrate on the open space, the protection of wetlands, uh, and those kinds of things. Um, I think we need to work together on, for example, the drug problem. That's a problem that we all share People don't stay within boundaries, and I think that's an issue that we can work on together. Um, and last, I think facilities that we all use, whether that be the zoo or the convention center, really need to be done on a regional basis, some of those larger ones, where we all share in the cost and we all share in the use of those. It's wonderful when you run out of questions and then I get the opportunity to ask one. Uh, Oregon City struggled for a number of years and as far as I know still is struggling with its own uh, history and its own 
uh, future and part of that struggle has been Clackamas County's government and whether it will land in Oregon City or be spread all over the county. Uh, what is Clackamas County's government's plan to uh, help Oregon City develop uh, or redevelop, if you will, as a historical center as I think they hope for and, and plan to do some point in time? Um, we have a good working relationship, I think, with the city of Oregon City. I meet with, I'm the liaison with uh, Oregon City and we meet probably every two or three weeks to talk about some mutual issues. The county would very much like to consolidate its facilities. We have facilities spread out in 38 different locations. Uh, I believe we would like to do that in Oregon City, which I think will help their community. We're also working with them on the whole end of the Oregon Trail. Uh, we're working with them for some of their urban renewal <coughs> development. I think you will be very surprised in five to ten years to see what's happened in Oregon City. I think it's a city that is ready to just go crazy. And I mean that in the best possible way. <laughs> it was certainly crazy when I worked there. <laughs> They used to accuse the publisher's paper of having effluent that caused it, however. Uh, regarding the uh, urban, <laughs> regarding the, uh, publishers doesn't exist anymore, so I can pick on them. Regarding the urban growth boundaries in Clackamas County, you've mentioned how difficult uh, the planning for these uh, will be. What do you think some of the tough choices that the county is going to have to make are, uh, and do you have a planning process in place to work on those? And this will be the last question. Well, as I said, I think if you look at the urban growth boundary and look at it in a region, one of the problems that occurs, for example, um, Clackamas County does not have much industrial land left. Uh, some other counties, Washington County, I think in particular, has considerably more. Uh, do we, I think the question is, uh, do we have enough in the region and then what happens to the subregions? I think those are questions that we have to answer. Uh, how can we share in that industrial base? Uh, the Oregonian just had an editorial a couple days ago talking about is there some way that you can, all the counties can share in that industrial base? I don't know if that's possible or not, but I think it's a question we need to look at. Um, at this point, uh, because we're working on it through Metropolitan Service District, we don't have a plan per se. We have all of the information to be able to give to Metro, uh, but we don't have our own specific planning process, uh, but we will have that shortly. I ask that you all join me in thanking Darlene Hooley for a fascinating presentation. And I wish to thank all of you who drove in from Clackamas County to hear uh, Darlene's address. Next week we will be back here at the Benson. We are adjourned.